Hello everybody and welcome back again. My name is Keith Gebhardt and in this lecture we're going to discuss switches and routers. We have several major different hardware components that make up our modern networking environments today, but for this course we are only going to focus on switches and routers. This will basically be a short lecture for those of you who don't know anything about networking yet, or maybe a bit of a review for those of you that are in your early stages of studies. Switches are layer 2 devices that use layer 2 addressing to determine where to forward data. Every port on a switch is considered to be a single collision domain. Now by default, all ports on a switch are considered to be in VLAN 1, making every port in a single VLAN by default a single broadcast domain. Switches can come in many different sizes with a different amount of ports. The more ports and features on a switch has, though, the more expensive it will be. So it is important to purchase the proper switch for your needs in your environment. The computer generated image, that little blue looking box thing, is how you would normally represent a switch on a network diagram or in a virtual environment. You'll also see it this way in most literatures you come across. At the bottom is an actual image of what a typical Cisco switch looks like. Now, they may be blue or silver, but they look pretty similar from the front view. Now, if you're trying to build a lab for your studies with the physical hardware, I personally like the 2960s, and they're pretty budget-friendly. You can find them at a pretty good deal, you know, on, if you look on Amazon or eBay, you find them used. Now, a couple of the other series I like are the 3500 series and 3700 series. I use the 3524s and 3750s a lot for my studies and training. Now, a couple models of the 2960s are considered Layer 3 switches, and the 3750s are also considered Layer 3 switches, but that is something more at a CCMP level level you really only get introduced to some layer 3 concepts in your CCNA studies. Now routers are considered our layer 3 devices which means they use our layer 3 addressing to determine where to forward data. For this course just note that only routers separate networks and each interface that is configured to a different network on a router is considered a separate broadcast domain. Every network is a separate broadcast domain so when we say routers separate broadcast domains or networks we are essentially speaking about the same thing. The computer generated image there, that little blue circle icon looking thing, <laughs> is how you would normally see a router represented graphically, you know, on a network diagram or in virtual environments. You also see it this way in most literatures you read. Now at the bottom, again, is an actual image of what a typical Cisco router looks like. Now most routers have their interfaces on the back where you can add different modules and different ports and different features to increase the functionality of the router. If you're trying to find some routers for building a physical lab, now I would recommend some of these models. These are the models I use for either studying or teaching. And you know, if you're building your lab for your CCNA studies, these are some of the models I would look into without really breaking the bank. Just remember to verify which versions of software your switches or routers are running. Older iOS versions do not have a lot of features you will need to be familiar with for your current exam objectives. And one major one being SSH. A lot of older versions, I think it was like 12.2 up to, or maybe 12.4, the early versions of 12.4, I can't recall the exact numbers, uh, don't allow you to actually use SSH. So that is something to keep in mind. And you could find the proper documentation for which features you, you would need on Google. Just do a quick Google search and you could find that information out. So you got a brief overview of Layer 3 devices, which are our routers, and a brief overview of Layer 2 devices, which are our switches. I gave you a short list of different devices I would consider using and the devices that I physically, personally use for teaching and studying that are kind of budget friendly. You know, they're more on the cheaper side for building physical labs. Otherwise, if you're not trying to find physical equipment, just stick to Packet Tracer. It's nice. It's going to do everything you need it to for your Cisco CCNA exam objectives and the studies. Now, if you have any questions, please use this time to ask your questions or leave your comments. Also, please do not forget to rate this course as it helps me be able to create content for you in the future. Now, I appreciate all reviews. However, I would appreciate if you reach out to me prior to leaving a negative review so I could try and resolve it for you. Also, please don't forget to check out Learn Tech Training on YouTube for free lectures, labs, and promotional offers for future courses we offer. I will see you guys in the next lecture.